guys know this is my reference standard for backpacking saws, right? The Saw Viver backpacking saw. Does it look familiar? Well, actually, not fancy. No, it doesn't. I've never seen it before. Well, okay, TMP here. You have been sleeping on the job. Big time. The Saw Viver has been an integral part of TMP since 2008, shown in all types of wilderness settings. Getting the work done up there. High altitude in the mountains. I love this saw. It's only 10.5 ounces. Yeah, and yet it is very capable for its size. That being said, there is a better saw that I do use, and I've never really done a tabletop review on it. But that's going to change right here, right now. Now remember the philosophy here in the Net Fancy Project of firepower versus mobility. It plays in so many different gear items that we discuss here in the philosophy of use discussion. Not always are you backpacking. Okay? The reason I love the Saw Viver so much is again the weight and the size. I mean it compacts down into this. So when we talk about SAWC in a backpacking POU, Saw Viver, it does it for me. Yes, I know there's some other saws out there. Some of you guys are really excited about your saws. I've read your comments. I understand that. This works for me. Has for a long time. But we were talking about something even better. What we got to understand is that we're not in a backpacking environment. Maybe we're on a vehicle-based system or we are backpacking, but not that long of a distance so we can take more saw. Okay, and I'm not going to get into the discussion of axe versus saw, knife versus saw. My system, 90% of the time, I would say probably 100% of the time, if I'm not packing up reviewing knives and other stuff that I'm testing for TMP, and if I'm going deep enough in where SAWC is so critical, this is the biggest saw I can take, if I can take one at all, is a saw, specifically, specifically the saw viver, a large survival knife, and some smaller utility knives. Okay, so POU, we're going to a bigger system, we can take more weight. This is what I'm going to advocate you get right now. Do not hesitate, it should be in your kit at your homestead even. The Baco Force Saws. Ooh, if size matters, say no more. Say no more. I mean, it dominates the Saw Viver in its length of cut. I'm going to take this blade guard off so you can take a look at the blade. Very similar to the Saw Viver. It is heat treated. Teeth. This one is a 24 inch Baco Force. It might be Baco Force. I just, I'm just going to call it Baco Force. Look at that. Look how much more cutting capability you have versus what is still an outstanding backpacking saw, the Saw Viver. What does that mean in practical terms? Well, if you've gotten out there in the woods, I don't need to tell you, you already know. You're minimizing your work. You're making the cut faster, more efficiently, minimizing calorie expenditures, and perhaps minimizing injury. Yeah, because I've seen it. Guys using a saw, they do this, they do that. You know, they tweak a finger. I know, it's rare, but it can happen. Make your life easy. Now, firepower versus mobility. We're kind of giving up some mobility. Not kind of. We totally are with this bigger saw because it's going to be, number one, <clears throat> bigger. Can you fit it in the pack? And no, it does not fold. I don't know. What's your system? Uh, if you are on a sled-based snowshoeing expedition, I say you totally can fit it and run with it. And honestly, over the years, I've used these Baco Force saws just with that type of expedition. We're out in the snow, and I, I'm sitting here looking at the gear rack before I'm suiting up, going out, and I'm like, ah, I'm not taking a saw viver. I can take the Bacos, man. Let's get it done. <laughs> Especially, here's a little secret, if someone else is pulling the sled, like winter since camp out, I took, I think this 24 inch Baco up there and I was like, oh dudes, these young dudes can tow it on up. Have at it boys, load up. 
you know, whippersnapper salting it up. I do it too. I mean, I just went out with uh, BHQ guys and I took a bake of 24 in the pack because we weren't going that deep in. The downside is, again, the size. Will it fit in the pack? It's going to take up room, whereas the saw viver underneath it will, again, fold up. So it's very narrow, very compact. And then also, as you can probably guess, it's heavier. Try about two pounds for this Bako Force 24 inch saw. Um, that's substantial. It is a mild steel tubing, I believe, powder coated orange. Nice big old fat ergonomic handle that is very comfortable, but it's two pounds. So again, we get back to what kind of system you run in vehicle based, shorter hike. Uh, think about it. Think about it. The Saw Viver, still so outstanding and beloved for its capabilities, for its weight. Like I said, you really got to tweak this tension screw down so this little saw blade of it, of the saw viver, won't come unfastened from the pins. Remember that? No, you don't? Okay, you need to watch that video, saw viver review. This is the firepower equation. Got a big old knob, you can crank it. Uh, I don't remember having any problems with these Bako forces at all, sawn. I mean, these are like farm quality tools. Okay, this is just something that is really designed to be used every day. I don't think these are designed as a wilderness saw. Hence the steel tubing. And they're just tough. I mean, it's just maintenance free. Other than you've got to keep that blade rust free. You know, I'll squirt WD-40 on it before I put it away or maybe rim oil. Uh, the teeth, again, harden. They're offset. They make a really fast cut. And it's just low maintenance. I'm usually cutting on the Ford Stroke with the Bakos. Again, super comfortable handle. Big enough for gloves. And you might ask, well, are there are other sizes that you'd recommend. <laughs> Funny you should ask. Funny you should ask. How about the 21 inch? There you go. Just a little bit shorter. But check this out. And this is going to be my recommendation for you. Is I would go with the 24. Because this one is just under 2 pounds. And this one is around 2 pounds. You'd be surprised... Uh, all I am, how little weight difference there are between the different sizes of Bakos. Here comes a freaking monstrous 30 incher. Bang! Now that's a serious saw. You know what? I'll say if you can integrate the 30 inch, integrate the 30 inch. Because you've already determined your system can take a two pound saw. Go the biggest one that will fit. And then when you get up there, you'll be going, man, I'm glad I got this big old one. You know? So, I, I recommend it. This one's seen a lot of use with both my family and in TMP. I just haven't got around to reviewing it yet. These are made in Sweden, by the way. Very high quality. I got to tell you that the Bako website blows chunks. Yeah, I'm not impressed. I went there trying to, I don't know, just see what the manufacturer's saying about these saws. But I had to, like, jump into a PDF catalog and waste all kinds of time. Uh, hey, Bako, put a search engine in your website so guys can just type in what they're looking for and find it without having to, I don't know, jump in and look in the PDF catalog. Maybe I missed that. I, I don't know. Could have. So, a remarkably the same weight, all these saws. Around two pounds. This one's actually about two pounds, four ounces. So, you're only adding four ounces for a 30-inch cut with a Bako. And it's funny, uh, like I'll take guys out there, crew members, visitors, whatever, people I've just tripped with over the years, and you know, I'll let them cut with a saw viver for a little while, and they're like, yeah, that's pretty cool, I like that. And I've had some of the youth bring up, you know, guys that I've taken out in youth groups, bring up their folding saws, like the Gerbers, some other brands, and they're sitting there fooling around, dicking around on the log. I give them a saw viver, and they're like, oh man, that is so awesome, I like that. It's really working good as long as you're pushing the wood apart so the blade is not binding very important point and also you're keeping the blade lubricated especially in sappy wood with WD-40 big point right there as well if you're doing that you're just gonna rip through but then I'll give them a Bako like the 30 inch I was like okay you did the saw viver now check this one out and it's like giving a caveman fire for the first time they're just like whoa Whereas, you know, people are rotating in and out of the saw viver, uh, you know, to be honest, readily, because it, it is tiring still. Not as tiring as cross-cutting with an axe or something like that, but it's tiring. 
And they'll still do it with these bakers, but it's a lot less frequent. A guy, a single dude can get a lot of work done with these saws. How about value? Uh, I'm going to say off the charts, as in awesome. I mean, these saws, for what they are and what they can do, are so affordable. Around 25 bucks. Look in the upper portion of the screen. That's my recommended retailer, subject to change. 25 bucks, maybe 30 for this one, the 30 inch one. That's why I'm saying you should just buy them immediately. Integrate them into your homestead. Even if you have a chainsaw and you think, hey man, I'm just going to use my chainsaw. Uh, okay, you need gas. Your chainsaw can break. The chain can bind up. You can have all types of maintenance problems. How about you make it simple and just go with a crosscut saw like this, a very dedicated woods saw like the Bakos. There is one way the company could really, really improve these saws though. And I hope they see this video and I hope they do it because it will create an entirely new genre in wilderness saws. Can you guess what I'm going to say? Long time TMPers probably can because they know I'm all about the weight. And the way we could reduce the weight on this bad boy is make this top tube, this frame, out of 6000 series aluminum bang now now that may reduce the weight down to a pound can you imagine a 30 inch saw like this down to a pound and there may be some others out there that i'm not aware of that already do this i apologize if i'm missing them but i love these saws i've used them and i would like to see bako do it and it yeah it's going to drive the price up no doubt it may go up she's i don't know that's expensive material and molding it and bending it to that it's going to be a pain. Maybe 40% price increase. I'd be down with it though. Because then I always have to, I don't have to worry about weight to a lesser extent. I always only have to worry about the S of SAWC and that is size. Can I fit it into my system? There you go. Highly recommended. That is the Nut and Fancy quick review of the Baco Force wood saws. And they function very, very well out in the woods, minimizing your work and time expenditure. See ya.